Entertainment Weekly has just released a new look at Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, including images of new characters, more concept art, and tons of new quotes from director Wes Ball about what we can expect from the movie. If you like what I do here and want to show your support, be sure to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all things apes. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone and welcome back to Ape Nation, your number one source for all things Planet of the Apes on YouTube. My name is Josh and today we've got yet another first look at Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, this time from Entertainment Weekly. So I guess Christmas came early for Planet of the Apes fans over the last few weeks because this is like the third or fourth first look slash new article with new pictures and new details about the movie that we've gotten just since I think the day before Thanksgiving. So it's been awesome getting all this stuff to talk about, it's been awesome getting to learn about about the movie the last few weeks. Really excited. I'm just gonna read through this entire article as I usually do. I pulled out a bunch of highlights that I'm gonna dive into, but I'm just gonna read through the full thing. And if you also wanna read it, I've posted the link down in the video description for you to check out. But with all of that said, let's just dive right in. Although he didn't know it, director Wes Ball spent his childhood training to direct Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, the 10th movie in the science fiction franchise, which began with the 1968 Charlton Heston starring installment. I was born in 1980, but for whatever reason, I grew up watching that original 68 version a lot, the filmmaker explains. It's odd that a kid would watch some older movie like that, but I fixated on that, and here I am playing a role in that long legacy. The world in which this latest tale takes place much more closely resembles the one encountered by Heston's time-traveling astronaut than anything seen in the most recent rebooted franchise. Simians are now in charge of a society which has slipped back to an earlier time, technologically speaking. Disease has wiped out much of humanity and transformed the remainder into mute, unintelligent beings. Ball reveals that his movie is set long after the last series entry, Matt Reeves' 2017 War for the Planet of the Apes the third big screen tale to hinge around the chimpanzee Caesar who was played with CG assistance by Andy Serkis. It's many many generations later, Ball says, in the time between the previous movie and this movie, this dark ages has happened where things have been lost and in our movie we're going to rediscover them on this grand adventure. The ape we follow on that quest is another chimpanzee called Noah, played by Owen T, whose credits include the IT movies and 2020's The Stand TV series. Ball describes the character as neither an adult nor a kid. He's on that threshold of becoming who he's going to be as an ape. He says, it's about him falling into these extraordinary circumstances that lead him into a world that he doesn't know. Teague's Noah is featured in EW's exclusive new look at Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, along with his two chimp chums, Lydia Peckham Suna and Travis Jeffries Anaya. They were raised together and they live in this small, isolated tribe, says Ball, who directed the three Maze Runner movies. The filmmaker teases that the shot of them reading from a book is from a chapter of Noah's journey and shows the trio looking at something that they don't understand. The film's antagonist is another chimpanzee named Proximus, who is played by Kevin Durand and sounds like the future world's Thomas Edison, or maybe it's Elon Musk. According to Ball, the interesting thing about Proximus is that with some help, he's rediscovered electricity. To apes that forgot about all these things, that's like a magic power, so they're experimenting with it. I don't think you can call him a villain. I would call him an adversary. You understand him, you can relate to him in a way. It's an interesting character who isn't just a mustache twirling cutout. The film's teaser trailer features Noah riding a horse towards vegetation covered skyscrapers, and you can see exclusive early concept art of that sequence. I've got a lot of great concept artists. We just sit there and daydream, the director says. That was one of the images that was like, Oh, that feels like this movie, a character on the border into a world he doesn't understand. For him, these ruins are mountains. They've always been there. He has no idea where they came from, or who built them, or if they were built at all. Ball has confirmed that his next film will likely be a live-action adaptation of beloved video game The Legend of Zelda, but the director is keen to make more monkey business and believes Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes could be the start of a new multi-movie saga. We don't want to be presumptuous. Whether this movie is successful is up to the movie gods, he says, but we certainly think there is a lot more story to be told. Not just in the Planet of the Apes legacy of it all, but in terms of these characters we've created and the arcs that we're thinking about. So yeah, we've got good ideas for what would come next. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes will be released in theaters next year on May 24th. Alright, so 
there is so much to go over in this article, a lot of information, a lot of new images and concept art to talk about. So I'm going to just start with the concept art and the image that we got. And there's also an additional image that we got of West Ball directing the movie. Don't really have much to say about that, but it looks like he's doing a good job behind the scenes, as you can see right here. So I'm just going to go right into the first image, which is the only actual still from the movie. Introduces these two new characters, Suna and Anaya. I think it's how you pronounce it. It might be Anya or... Anya, I don't know, but Anaya just rolls off the tongue the best for me, so that's what I'm calling this character. So Westball talks about how they're looking at something that's not quite known to them and that this is part of Noah's journey. Obviously, it's very vague details right there. We don't really quite know yet what they're looking at, but the information about these characters that they were raised together, that they live in this small isolated tribe, it tells me that maybe these characters will actually be involved for a majority of the movie. I was under the assumption that maybe Noah and Raka just lived on their own in their little tribe, but apparently there's other apes there with them, these two being among them. So I am curious to see how their relationship plays out, how their friendship plays out. My hope is that we get another awesome trio like we had with Caesar, Rocket and Maurice. So maybe this could be at the start of a really great new trio just like them, but we shall see. And then as for the concept art, so in the first one that Westball talked about, it is that shot of Noah entering uh, that kind of uncharted territory on horseback. This is a concept art that eventually became that scene. Just visually speaking, I think it's really striking. What I do wonder is that building that is in front of him, I do wonder if that's meant to be the building that they're gonna enter in that scene that I just talked about. Maybe that is Gensis or the remains of Gensis before it just kind of became this destroyed shell of a building. So we'll see where that goes. And then the last piece of concept art, and like they said, they were just throwing out pieces of art, what could and couldn't be in the movie. This is an image that I hope is in the movie because something I love about it is that it evokes that mystery about what happened to humanity and the end of human civilization. It's taking place inside some sort of sporting arena. I think it's a baseball stadium, but it might be football. I can't really tell, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a baseball stadium. And it evokes that same feeling from beneath the Planet of the Apes when they are down under in the subway station and you see what is left of this place that was part of human civilization at its peak I and mean, now it's just left in rubble this kind of gives you that same feeling so i love when they do stuff like this in post-apocalyptic movies in general but i really love it in land of the apes so i'm hopeful that we'll get to see more stuff like this as we continue along in the timeline as humanity is now a thing of the past so i like this image a lot i hope it's in the movie now getting into all these interesting new reveals from west ball about the movie so the first thing he talked about, and this is just more of a me being excited, a fan thing, is that he grew up watching the 1968 movie. That's just always nice to hear that the people that are making these movies are fans. You know, I don't think it's necessary for someone to be a diehard fan of a franchise just to be able to make something good and of quality. And as long as they have a good story to tell and they have a good vision to bring to the screen, I think that's all that really matters. But it is nice to hear when West Ball says, you know, he watched this as a kid. He fixated on the movie again and again and again. I was the same way when I first got into these movies. So it makes it a little more relatable. It's nice to hear that from him. And it gets me more excited to see maybe what he brings to the table from being a diehard fan since he was a kid. So that's really exciting to hear. The next thing that really stuck out to me was humanity is pretty much completely mute on intelligent beings at this point. I don't know if that really does mean that there is not a single talking human in this movie or if that's just something that the article mentioned but that I do really wonder if we are not going to hear a single human speak in this entire movie. I think that would be really interesting. And then something else that I really thought was cool was they talked about how the dark ages happened between war and kingdom. There's that 300 year period where we don't know what happened, just the continuing fall of human civilization and the rise of ape civilization. And they talk about how things have been lost and in our movie, we're going to rediscover them on this grand adventure. That can mean so many things, but I really do wonder if part of Noah's journey is going to be about rediscovering what actually happened. Many people have been speculating, myself included, what it means for him. How does it relate to him? How does it connect to him as a character? Maybe it has to do with where he comes from. 
or his ancestry or something like that. But it could also be completely unrelated and it could just be about him discovering truly the history of apes and how their evolution began. So I think it's going to be really cool for these characters that we're looking at as new characters in this world that we've already been introduced to. But for them, they've never interacted with, you know, Caesar and Maurice and all that history that we've seen unfold over the last few movies. So I think it's going to be really exciting for them to discover something that we've already known. And I think there's a lot of fun to be had there. There's a lot you can play with there from a storytelling perspective. So that's got me kind of excited. And then the next thing I really want to talk about is that quote about Noah, where they say he's neither an adult nor a kid. He's on that threshold of becoming who he's going to be as an ape. So I think that tells us about the age range of this character. He's in that young adult area. I'd say probably around where Caesar was in Rise of the Planet of the Apes in ape age, I think. It's like four or five years old. For us, that's probably close to 18 or early 20s. So I like that we have this new protagonist who is on the younger side, who can open things up to that sense of adventure and discovery, um, which is something I love about Planet of the Apes, especially the original film, and they can bring that to this movie. So I'm excited about that. I like that decision. I like that direction they're going with a young adult type of protagonist. And it also plays into West Ball's wheelhouse. Obviously, he did the Maze Runner films, so I think he's going to maybe take what he learned from those and he can apply it to here, maybe improve a little bit. And then the one other thing I really liked that was interesting, and we've kind of heard about this before, but we've gotten more details now is Proximus Caesar's story and how it involves him rediscovering electricity. So we'd heard before that it was about Proximus Caesar trying to find ancient human technology. We speculated about what that might mean, what that could be, how they might use it, well, now we have a confirmation it is electricity that they're trying to discover. So that just in itself is a very interesting plot point that I could see going a multitude of ways in this story, how it can ultimately unravel the future of this series, how it could be used both for good and for evil, how that theme could be utilized in the story just by itself. So. I'm really interested in how they're going to do that, what type of electricity, how far along are they going to be able to use it? Are we going to get to a point where we're even just seeing apes use cameras or make music, like things like that? Or is it going to be strictly for weapons? Are we going to be seeing them using electric tools? I think there's so much that is possible just from that idea alone. So I think that's really, really cool that they're going down that route. And then the other thing in regards to Proximus Caesar that I really liked that West Ball said was that, and this is something I've talked about multiple times on this channel already, is that my favorite types of villains are the ones where you understand where they're coming from, you empathize with them, or at least you might be able to empathize with them. What West Ball talks about is that exact quote is, I would call him an adversary. You understand him, you can relate to him in a way. It's an interesting character who isn't just a mustache twirling cutout. I like that quote so much. That's completely the type of villain that really resonates with me. So just hearing that reassures me a bit that that's what we're going to get with this character. So it gets me even more excited about Proximus Caesar, who I've said before is my probably most anticipated thing going into this movie at this point. I'm so fascinated by this character, where he's coming from, what he's doing, why he's doing it, and where he might go in the future, assuming he doesn't die at the end of this movie. So I'm so excited for Proximus. One other thing I did also want to talk about is the last bit that West Ball mentions is that when it comes to the future of this series, this trilogy that they have planned out, they're not just thinking in terms of the Planet of the Apes history unfolding, but also in terms of these specific character arcs and where they're going to take them and what their journey is going to be, what their story overall from beginning to end is going to be. I love hearing that. It definitely gets me even more excited to meet these characters and see how their story evolves in this movie. So there's a lot that came out of this article. Really glad that we've been getting so much Planet of the Apes stuff. It's been really fun getting to get a taste of what this new movie is going to be like, what this new series of films is going to be like. As a Planet of the Apes fan, I'm super excited for all the stuff that's still yet to come. But I want to know what you guys have to say. What do you think about all these images? What do you think about the concept art? What do you think about all the stuff with Proximus Caesar and Electricity and Noah's story and Noah's two friends and West Ball being a fan of Planet of the Apes. Let me know what you think of all this stuff that came out of this awesome article. Like I said, if you haven't read it, I've put the link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Thank you so much for checking out today's video here on Ape Nation. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all things apes. I'll catch you in the next one. So until then, goodbye.